Let's look at some naturally occurring polyprotic acids, amino acids. Amino acids are found in your body. They're the building blocks of the proteins in your body. They're called amino acids because each one has an amino group and an acid group. Here's the amino group and the carboxylic COOH group. Now, I've drawn them at pH 7. And I draw them at pH 7, that means this carboxylic acid group with pKa2 will be in its basic form. The pH is about five units above the pKa, so the basic or unprotonated form predominates. These two side groups here, I have drawn protonated because their pKa's, 9 and 10.5, are above the pH. So here's pKa, 10.5, the pH is 7 below that on the acidic side of that, so the acidic or protonated form predominates. Here, tyrosine as well has a side group, and I refer to the side groups or side chains as the groups in addition to the amino and acid groups. All amino acids have amino and acid groups, Different amino acids have different side chains. Some of them have acidic protons. The case for tyrosine, the pKa of this acidic proton is 10. So at pH 7, that's a pH below or on the acidic side of the pKa, that will be protonated. And in this case, that will be a neutral charge. Notice when I protonate the amino group here at the end of lysine, that attains a positive charge. Let's look at some more amino acids. Here's aspartic acid and histidine. These are lower pKa side groups. So here's aspartic acid with its carboxylic acid on the side chain, pKa 3.9. That's going to be in its basic form at pH 7. That's because the pH is greater than the pKa. It's on the basic side, so the unprotonated or basic form predominates. And that form also has a negative charge. Here's histidine. It has a pKa 6 for its side group. At pH 7, that's the basic side, that will be the unprotonated form. The unprotonated form here is neutrally charged. And notice I'm very close here. There's just a factor of one pH unit, so you know there's a factor of 10. There's 10 times as much of the unprotonated basic form as the protonated form. If I drop the pH, say down to pH 6, then where the pH is equal to the pKa of this side group, there'd be the same amount, equal concentrations of the protonated and unprotonated, or positively and neutral charged histidine. Now that's very important because the charge on amino acids, especially their side groups, affects the structure of proteins. Proteins are molecules in your body that do all the catalysis in your body. They help your chemical reactions go. And proteins are long chains of amino acids. And one of the reasons proteins can operate is their three-dimensional structure. That is, one end comes close to this end and this is folded here and this is folded here, and they form complex structures that allow them to do catalysis in your body. One of the things that holds those structures together are charges on the side groups. You have a positively charged side group here, a negatively charged side group here. Those are attracted coulombically and can anchor the three-dimensional structure, hold it together by that coulombic attraction. Now, if you change the pH, that can alter the protonated state of those various side groups. And you could lose those positive or negative charges, and the molecule would fall apart. If the molecule falls apart, it can't perform its catalytic operation anymore. And I can actually demonstrate that for you. There's enzymes, one of them peroxidase, which are very common in nature. In fact, in turnips, I have some turnip here. And if I take some turnip, and I grind it up to form a slurry, there's so much peroxidase in turnips that that slurry will have peroxidase activity. That is, it'll break down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring in a blender here. And I've, I've already ground up some turnip in advance here, kind of in the Julia Child, Child style. 
So I've got a slurry already. I'm going to make a little more here. Now I have a slurry of turnip or a slurry of peroxidase, and I'm going to put that into two beakers here. To one of the beakers, I'm going to add HCl, a strong acid. So let me get my safety glasses on here. I'll add a strong acid. I've actually put some indicator in here too, so you'll see the color change indicating that strong acid. So I've changed the pH here. So if I change the pH, I change the protonated state and I should affect the activity of the peroxidase. That molecule should denature. So what I'm going to do now is add hydrogen peroxide to each flask, and we should see peroxidase activity, bubbling oxygen here, and we've denatured the protein here. I don't think we'll see any peroxidase activity in this flask. So let's just do that. Hydrogen peroxide in to peroxidase solution, and there you have it. Peroxidase, hydrogen peroxide being decomposed by the natural peroxidase in turnips. But in this solution, even if I give it a little stir to help it go along, you see we've essentially killed the peroxidase activity. We've denatured that peroxidase by changing the pH. Here, a vigorous peroxidase activity, oxygen being produced, bubbling up through that solution. Here, almost nothing happening. So the pH, vital to the structure of proteins because it maintains, defines which proteins are in which state. That is, the protonated or unprotonated state and how they are linked together.